that uh, it's very important to take the emperor reduced and DAPA HF trials together as being complementary trials, which studied a broad spectrum of patients with heart failure and a reduced ejection fraction with and without diabetes. So um, a way of thinking about it is these are sister trials. Uh, they weren't identical. Uh, they studied somewhat different populations, but they produced exceptionally concordant results. So uh, it is much more informative not to look at each trial in isolation because they studied a specific population in a specific way, but to look at the two trials together, look at the totality of the available evidence, especially since the benefits of uh, the drugs in the two trials were so similar. It's, it is not just cardiologists that, who have been slow in prescribing drugs that are effective for the treatment of heart failure. It, it's all physicians. Uh, remember that most heart failures uh, patients with heart failure are not taken care of by cardiologists. Uh, 80, 85 percent are taken care of uh, by primary care physicians. And uh, it is true that cardiologists uh, prescribe newer drugs faster than primary care physicians, but many cardiologists are also slow in prescribing these drugs. Um, it, it's very unfortunate because now we have four drugs which um, have a meaningful effect to modify the course of the disease. These are disease-modifying drugs. And um, that means that all patients with heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction should be receiving all four drugs, angiotensin receptor, uh, neprilysin inhibitors, beta blockers, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists, and now SGLT2 inhibitors. Um, and they should be receiving them at uh, the doses that have been shown to uh, reduce morbidity and mortality. But fewer than 1% of patients with heart failure in the United States are receiving all these drugs at target doses. So um, there is a substantial under prescribing of these drugs. Um, the reasons are complex. Um, some of it is that uh, it is uh, often perceived by physicians that, well, if a patient is stable, that they don't have to intensify therapy. But in fact, the trials show that it is the stable patient whose symptoms have remained essentially unchanged that benefits dramatically from these drugs. Um, some physicians may uh, worry about uh, the forms that need to be filled out, uh, the obstacles that payers uh, place in uh, prescribing, uh, allowing physicians to prescribe these drugs. Um, but this is, this is an unfortunate consequence of the way our healthcare system is. And uh, physicians really owe an enormous responsibility to patients with heart failure to make sure they're treated properly. So I think the two trials together, Emperor Reduced, DAPHF, put together, provide such strong reinforcing evidence. Uh, I think uh, the two trials together are far more compelling than either trial alone. The, the striking concordance of the effect on hospitalizations uh, or the effect on quality of life, functional class. Um, these are benefits that have not occurred by chance alone. This is a direct effect of these drugs. And now it's been seen in two trials.
in, we now have uh, trials with uh, many different SGLT2 inhibitors. Uh, empagliflozin uh, may have been the first. We now have data with uh, dapagliflozin, canagliflozin, or tugliflozin uh, across a, a number of very well done large scale trials uh, in patients with type 2 diabetes, in, in patients now with uh, chronic heart failure, in patients with chronic kidney disease, the concordance of the data across uh, multiple members of the same class across multiple disease states is really impressive. 